recorded from the studio and premiering live on your device. It's late night with special guest Joyce Workbook. Now give it up for your host, Emily Grossbook. Hello and welcome to Late Night. Unfortunately, our previous host, Matthew, is on an extended vacation for the foreseeable future and won't be joining us today. Oh, sad. Anyway, it just so happens that March is Women's History Month. I know it's April, but whatever, we're still celebrating because it's our show, not yours, and we love women here at Late Night. Take from that what you will. So, in honor of Women's History Month, we thought we'd introduce you all to some kick-ass women. As you may have heard, Deb Holland was recently sworn in as the Secretary of the Interior. Holland is the fourth woman and the first Native American to hold this position of power. Unless, of course, you count these several hundred years in which Native Americans were in charge of their own land, which the government obviously does not. F***ing colonizers. And if you, too, are a product of the American education system, you may not know what the Secretary of the Interior does. Holland will be in charge of land preservation, which is a big deal because environmentalism is often whitewashed and is not presented as an inclusive space for people of color. Ironically, she will be managing the lands that Native Americans were kicked off of, aka literally every national park. Moving on, you can't really talk about successful women without at least mentioning Oprah. At her peak, she came to be known as the queen of talk shows and was considered American royalty, only for her to now only be known as the lady that says, you get a car, you get a car, you get a car. My main question is, how does one get a car from Oprah? Your girl needs a new rig. Recently though, Oprah conducted possibly one of the most important interviews in British royalty history. As a result of this interview, we learned that, surprise, the oldest standing symbol of colonization and classism is f***ing racist. Honestly, I wouldn't want to hear about it from anyone other than Oprah and Meghan Markle. The next icon in our lineup has only ever been canceled for one thing, being too f***ing glamorous. Our Lord and Savior Dolly Parton not only funded the Moderna COVID vaccine, but she's also created a reading program for children, sponsored college students, and spoken out against homophobia. I love Dolly, but I can't imagine having that much power and being able to decide what to do with it. I can't even decide what to feed myself in the morning, eggs or oatmeal. Help me, Dolly. You're my only hope. Dolly definitely sparks joy, but do you know what doesn't? Men walking down the street who tell me that I'd be prettier if I smiled. I've seen a lot of women talking about this who have different methods for responding to these men. So here are some responses to the phrase, you should smile more. Number one, barking, a classic, woof. Number two, say, I would, but it feels wrong considering the incident. Number three, say, you should talk less. Number four, flip him off, also a classic. Number five, make the ugliest face possible. Number six, say, me, smile, in this economy. Number seven, do a Jack Nicholson in the shining smile. And finally, number eight, moonwalk away awkwardly like Nick Miller. Personally, I've only ever glared at them, but since I wear a mask everywhere I go now, I've decided to start barking. I have a friend who I'm sure has experienced this and more. She's here to talk about her stories coming up right after this break. Okay, our heads meet over at us. We're going 
going to let David come in and pitch us. So it's time to pick us up. Bye, John. For sure, yeah. Is that a, you want me to come in this? Sure. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Hi. I, uh, I had chips. I had it. I had. Ch I know, Ali. You, you like salt and vinegar chips. There was. I had an offering for you. <laughs> you there's. It's. It used to, it's on the floor. I'm gonna take my jacket off. I'm a little. Just a kind of. Kind of hot. So, uh, the, yes. The sketch. Um. It's simple. It's so simple. It's um. The first thing we need to do is we, we need a pigeon hoarder, and 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 what you need to do is it, 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 so essentially we we need some like uh, like uptown pigeons you know pigeons with style and and, and class. Um, I I think if we if we just go downtown there should be just enough. <laughs> It'll be great. Uh, uh, of course we'll also need um, 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 uh, a costume designer. Uh, a one it requires a hat, and that, that's gonna come in later. The hat is it's important to the sketch, because <laughs> like first of all, the audience is gonna see me like, why is why is this patient wearing a hat? You know why? Why would it? It gets better from that from that from that point. Um, it's not just the hat that's the focus. Obviously, there's the, it's not like I've been trying to think of what to write for this sketch for the past five. Weeks. I'm just uh, so essentially what it is. So the the hat's important. The friends. The friends. So it'd be important if you found some some pigeons with chemistry. I know that's a lot to ask. It's hard times. Uh, pigeons get rougher and rougher as as years go by. But I think I I'm hopeful. I'm full of hope. Uh, no, 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 please don't cut me off. Please, no, no, no. I, I, uh, there's so much more to it. There's so much more to it. It's more than just the hat. The hat is just the, the, the beginning. It, it, it'll get so much better, really. No, please. No, please don't take me back there. No. No, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. No, God. Oh, Felix smells so bad in there. Oh. The Godmother. A pitch you can't refuse. And we're back. Everyone say hello to my friend from Yakima, champion chicken herder and rodeo queen, Joyce Bertram. <laughs> Hiya, honey. Oh, I'm just happier than a fox in a hen house to be here with you today. It's good to see you, Joyce. So first question that I have, really quickly. If you're from Yakima, where does your accent come from? Oh, well, honey, I just don't know what you're talking about. This is just how I speak. Okay. That works. Uh, well, first question. Um, so I invited you here to talk about living and learning on campus as a woman. Can you tell us about your experience? Oh, honey, do I have the story for you. So I walk into the bathroom and what do I see? My dear friend, Ashley, scissors out, about to cut her some bangs, Carrie Underwood blasting, Bleach and hair dye on standby. And boy, did I feel that. Oh yeah, I've definitely been Ashley before. You know, I, my first year in, in Hinderley, I was living on the second floor and every once in a while I would be in there dyeing my hair blue or something, you know. Miss that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh honey, I did that too. I went purple while listening to Miss Swift's Picture to Burn. Mm, iconic. I shine like the setting sun on a warm Sunday's evening. <laughs> Love that for you. <laughs> I, I really miss hair dye breakdowns, but I'm working on growing out my hair right now, which is boring as f <laughs> So uh, other than dyeing your hair, have you ever had any uh, breakdowns lately? Oh, I haven't broken down, but let me just tell you, 
These darn Zoom meetings are making me madder than a puffed toad. I mean, why is it that every time you're speaking your piece, somebody just feels the need to interject? I, I mean, Johnny, we don't need you to mansplain what mansplaining means. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel that. I feel like every time I have an idea in a Zoom meeting, I get interrupted and then a man says the exact same thing five seconds later and he gets all the credit for it. What the hell is that about? <laughs> you know what that is? Them darn boys just can't even pour the water out of a boot <laughs> with the instructions on the heel. They gotta take a good idea to look good. Bless their hearts, they try so hard. <sighs> Sometimes they try so hard you can see steam escaping from their head. I mean, <laughs> you could boil an egg with that kind of heat. God, and they're heartless too. You know, I was, I was walking outside of Ohm once and I was carrying my homework, my groceries, a birthday gift for my cat, uh, a 3D Millennium Falcon puzzle, and my lucky oyster shell when I slipped on some water and I absolutely ate it. Milk everywhere Ugh. and i'm still missing a piece of that puzzle god if anyway i i fell in front of this guy and all he said was that sucks and he kept walking thankfully i had some girlfriends pass by to help me pick me up hmm i just wouldn't know about that i don't fall and i would never ever as the three-time milk queen of Yakima drop milk. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. Milk is very sacred where I come from. I use milk as hydration and as a snack because it's just so darn filling. I mean, some days I just drink a gallon of milk and don't have anything else, not even a cup of coffee. Oh, revenue has gone down since I have been distance learning. <laughs> Even though it's my family's farm that supplies that sweet nectar. Nectar, okay, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I'm more curious about your title, Milk Queen. Oh, absolutely. So Yakima has a pageant every year where a bunch of us cow-loving ladies gather up in a pasture with our lovely horses and we herd us up some of our dairy cows. So once we have them all lined up, we get to work on them udders. And the first cowgirl to fill up three pails of milk wins the title. Three pails? That's a lot of milk. Uh -huh. Aren't you draining those cows? Oh, don't worry. The cows are all right. They're tough old broads. <laughs> OK, uh, I'm still a little concerned about the cows but I think we should move on. Um, so here's a sort of a, a more serious subject. Have you, as a woman, experienced any catcalling or difficulty walking around campus or Parkland? Ooh, baby, let me tell you what. I cannot walk five feet on this here campus without getting a shout from some man who ain't got the good sense God gave a rock, though. I did come up with a good trick to get rid of those rapscallions. All you gotta do is wear some baggy clothing to get rid of those fine curves, put your nice long tresses up in a hat, and carry around a multi-tool to make them think you're one of them. Yikes. Isn't it something that in order to stop being catcalled in public, we have to dress like a man? <laughs> I mean, I wanna go on night walks all the time, but I would rather not get kidnapped. Nothing says freedom, like dressing up like one of them sad bodybuilders. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's been really nice to talk to you, Joyce, and I really appreciate you coming in today. <sighs> All right. Well, it has been an absolute joy. And don't y'all forget to drink your milk and respect women now, you hear? All right. Well, everybody stay tuned. We've got a great segment coming right up. Jared, do you see that we're going anywhere? The game's going to be on soon.
Uh, what game? The Chewfall finals are on in a few minutes. I literally cannot miss it. Here, I'll check over there. You check the couch. Gotcha. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. It's not here. Well, did you check the shower? Uh, why would it be in the shower, exactly? Well, did you look? I'm sorry, I don't think you understand the question. Why the hell would it be in the shower? I don't know, why did Becky break up with you? Dude, that is such a low blow. You know she broke up with me because she said I wasn't communicating. Exactly! That doesn't make any sense! Just go look in the shower! Fine! It is in the mailbox right now. Marla, how did you know it was in the mailbox? But Marla, why was it in the mailbox? Marla, don't just walk away like that. Come on! Marla! Marla, keep your eyes on this remote at all times. I don't want it to leave your hands, like, at all. Okay? O okay, jeez. Good. I swear I didn't set it down. I looked away and it was gone. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. We will see you again in the summer. And as always, stay nightly, Lutes.